Hey everybody, welcome to Hit or Die Podcast with your hosts Jake Saldati and Chad Rothford. We're here with two legends, as most have been saying lately, the GOATs um, around here, Fresno. Uh, Fresno City College head coach Ron Scott and uh, head assistant pitching coach uh, Eric Solberg. Uh, thanks you guys for coming on the podcast. My pleasure. The pleasure. winningest coach. The winningest coach of all time. And I, the record I keeps coming. Hear, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear it. What? Did you just say? You're the winningest oh, okay, I got it. Thank you. coach in the state of California <laughs> for the 3C2A. We were talking 1, about this today before uh, we got here about, is this going to be touched? It's not going to be touched, right? It's not going to be touched. Especially after we get done with this season, I don't think it'll be touched. We'll, we'll, get, we'll definitely be over 1,080, almost. We might be 1, 000, if, almost 1,100. I mean, if... You keep going, like it's just gonna keep. Or eleven hundred, I guess that would be a thousand and a hundred. Be eleven hundred. That's eleven hundred. Yeah. Are you guys, are you guys ruling me <laughs> that out city when education. he retires? That I can't do this. Went go uh, another thirty but no, five you, years. But then you have to start over at one, though, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you don't right. inherit those. <laughs> no. no. I think he's two and maybe three and and four in the games I've been thrown out of. Seven total. Yeah. No, I think probably off, more I think than he's that. off there. Yeah, I'm probably. That like, was one year. Yeah, there's no way seven. <laughs> you've been thrown out only seven times in 34. He talked his way back into one at Santa Maria. I remember that. That did not happen. He, lo- he told the umpire, I've never been thrown out of a game. I said, please don't do this. I've never been thrown out. That was one of my goals. And he goes, okay, okay I'm, I'm going to. Re-. He went over it and he goes, I'm going to rescind it. I'm going to rescind the ejection. It was against Cypress. Yeah, he looked, at, he looked at Pick. And Pick. He said, uh, Scott Pickford. He goes, is you all right with this? He goes, Whatever. <laughs> Speaking of pick, is he now uh, the next one that has a chance to surpass Snedden? He's not co- head coach anymore. He's not at Cyprus anymore? No. He might be Cyprus. He's at Cyprus, but he's not the head coach. He hasn't been the head coach the last couple of years. So is he doing like the Padretti thing at Merced? He's like on staff, but he's Probably. just not the head coach? Yeah. Wow, I didn't I know he's, that. I think he runs their offense. And yeah. And he's, he's still doing the Cape Cod, though? Yes. Yes. Last year he was. That's where. Uh, that's how Wilson got there. Yeah, was through pick. So yeah, it's untouchable. Then if that was the next guy well, that you, had a chance. You mentioned I something. Thought, too. You guys play less games than you used to before. Yeah, well, the state championship right there. They were, you know, 40, they played fifty-two, 52 games. games. And Ron, when I, when I was here, we that, played forty. Yeah, Ron had that put in, so nobody could catch him. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> they're going to reduce the schedules next year to twenty games. <laughs> So. How has it been having to deal with the last couple of years, just with the COVID season, and then last year it was, you're still adjusting to what the state's wanting to do and COVID and all that. And I mean, realistically, this with with playing a normal schedule could have happened last year or should have happened last year. Well, I'm gonna I'll answer that before he says something because I I know uh, something clever to say. But <laughs> two years ago we were 17 and three, having a great year. And we were stopped, shockingly stopped, because I don't think anybody realized uh, how big this was going to be. And then last year, we didn't have a very good year, but uh, it, it, everything was completely different. There was no playoffs. There was really nothing to shoot for. And um, we, we kind of played like that and, and probably coached like that a little bit too. So I, I think the last maybe two years ago, it wasn't difficult because we didn't know it. It just happened, and, we, and it was stopped. And then last year, it just was, man, it was just – wasn't a season, so, but we're. I think we're back now. We have forty game schedules, and and if we stay out of big COVID issues, we'll be, we'll get a chance to, you know, win a league championship and then go on in the state playoffs. Yeah, for me, you know, I've been doing it kind of year round with the two sports, and it's just to be honest with you, it just hasn't been very much fun. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, we're all having fun. We joke around, but you know, when there's nothing out there dangling the carrot it's hard to stay motivated and I, last year i thought we we were like that and that because you know going in it's this is what it is there's no playoffs and i i just don't i think it's hard to keep the players motivated and then i think just the players are different you know through this they're different as students they're different as athletes and it's i it feel it, everything feels different i think we're a little bit back to normal except for school stuff you know, I think these guys and girls and whatever are struggling sometimes in school. And and maybe this online is the new norm, you know, and I think that's just talking about that with somebody today. And I'm not, you know, our, I, I know our school needs to do that. And I know schools need to have online programs. But I think it's, um, for me, I think it's a poor way to learn. I agree. 
I think also with this season, you know, last year being my first year on staff with you guys and um, not having the record, I think it, even though we could have done it last year, I think this year it means more because we do have playoffs. We do have the state championship. So just having that record and now we can breathe a little bit. And you two especially, um, you know, just with the last couple of years just being asked all the time, uh, first retirement, first the wins, all that crap. And now it's finally – uh, you guys get to breathe and just relax, and now we can strive for winning a, you know, the CBC and then and going on to the playoffs. That it, I think it means more coming this year. I, I think I hate, uh, I hate, I'm even going to say this because that goes against my grain. But even the losses last year weren't painful like normal. Like you know, we've lost three games this year by four runs total, and they bother me a lot more than the losses we had last year. I mean, last year we, I mean, normally if we lose the COS, our kids walk home from Visalia. Um, <laughs> But we didn't make them walk home. We just got in the bus and said, "Oh well, and let's we'll move on to the next game." And it, and you know, just it just it just wasn't the same. I'm not downplaying the success other schools had, but um, man, it was just a real difficult year. And even if we would have set the record last year, like people said, "Would you have retired?" I wouldn't have retired because it wasn't a baseball season. And I was telling Snedden that the other night that. Uh, I'm glad it happened this year because we're playing a regular baseball season and it was some some goals out there that we're trying to achieve let's take us back to 19 i guess it'd be 88 well you you mentioned the 86 season well the 86 he, season but real quick we have well we have to mention you guys this is the 34 22 cbc championships nine final four appearances and uh i mean besides that all the draft picks all the i mean the other night you were naming off all the schools that people have gone to out here it's ridiculous i didn't even realize some of the schools um, but going back to, yeah, 1986, the, but was it 1986 when you beat, uh, Bullard and NYL and then the Valley championship, you guys lost 86. We lost to, uh, Rocky Incline from T- Tulare beat us in the semis, but we were, I think we were 25 and three or 27 and three at Madeira had a great team. And that's really when I got to know Eric right, right during those times. I think I coached a couple of varsity games that year. Wasn't that, you're talking about with Ruckman, right? Yeah. What's so that? I was, uh. I was coaching JV at Bullard uh, with Bob Amendola. <clears throat> we went 21-0, and 0 actually, so I kind of got the coaching bug. And then I coached varsity uh, baseball in the playoffs. And then Noakes asked me to come up to varsity the next couple of years. So of the it goes back even before here. Oh, it yeah. way back before then. That's how I got to know him. That, he was my choice to be the first guy I asked to come on and, and – we we struck it off right away. He, they were in the we were in Silver Dollar, and they were celebrating. I was back in the corner, sucking my thumb with a <laughs> drink and a diet coke. And this was this was probably spring of '88, probably spring of '88. And I asked him if he would consider coming on and being a pitching coach. And and I remember he kind of thought, boy, we have a really good team at Bullard next year. I'd like to stay there. And I asked Noakes permission to talk to Eric. I did the right thing, and and uh, he said, boy, I really would like to have him one more year. And then, as it turned out, he, he didn't go back one more year. He came here, and, and we've been together ever since. Yeah, that was – Noakes wanted me to stay because that was the class of Todd Johnson. And I and I started with those guys as freshmen. And so – and they were going to Florida. So, I, you know, it was kind of cool. We're going to go to Florida. And we'd won the Valley. We were loaded coming back. I mean, loaded coming back. But you got to go to Taft with us. Yeah. And that's <laughs> – that was the swinger. It. it was close. Yeah. Yeah. That was a swinger. So, two trips to Taft, you know, outweigh Florida. One trip to Taft, I probably would have went to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> you mentioned too before we started about say, you you claimed a couple wins in there. Uh, I just do it as joking, just because. I mean, we definitely. He definitely didn't finish some games, I know. Um, and I, I know we've lost some games. He didn't coach. We've won some games. I know we we blew a game here against COS. I remember I was telling you the other day, mm-hmm. your dad and I were the only ones left. <laughs> that, was, that was actually crazy. Yeah, and, and your dad was coaching third. We had the runner on third like five times. And we just didn't How was he giving down. those signs? Yeah, it was a slow. Jim, if you're watching, it was like. You know, it was like Rain Man was watching them or something. But it, it was, you know, we've lost some games. Uh, Gamene and Ron got thrown out on watch the game. They, you know, they gave me the game against Cyprus, so that was cool on the coast. 
Yeah. And we we uh, had Bart. Bart put in new signs for that game. Yeah. Remember? And we actually, you know, played a great game. We lost like four three, but we lost. So I, I don't remember. I remember when he had uh, his hip surgery. You know, we won a couple games um, without him, but uh, I don't know. I don't really know my record. And I, you know, I probably missed a few games along the way when I was, you know, I worked eleven years here without being on faculty or anything. So every now and then, I was selling wieners somewhere. Uh, it was a, you know, I was a wiener salesman. He sold hot dogs, so no matter where we went, we knew where the closest phone booth was. We pull over, he'd drop off, and he'd have his briefcase. He'd start making all these calls, and then he would, it'd be like Superman. He'd come flying out of the phone booth in his uniform and call pitches and take care of the. Pitches. Yeah, this would be, you know, before cell phones. So yeah, which I guess isn't very flattering to us, but <laughs> for those people that are listening, but we, yeah, that, I mean, exactly what he's saying. <clears throat> Is if I could make the bus trip, I would get off the bus sometimes at the corner of where the school was, and walk to the nearest, you know, payphone and start, you know, finishing my day on the. It just drove me nuts. First of all, do you guys even know what a payphone is? Yeah, yeah. Okay. we do. So we I do. We go there. Thought we'd go there. We first. still had to call one eight hundred collect in school, and when they'd ask you your name, you said "come pick me up," and then yeah. your parents would. You got a call from "come pick me up," and they knew <laughs> they knew where to get you. Yeah. Unfortunately, I worked for a company that was kind of knew what I was doing you know they they let me along as long as I sold sold enough and then uh you know Ron motivated me to get my master's otherwise uh I certainly I, I really don't believe I would be here if I would have never been hired no because it's just it's too taxing there's you know it's very rewarding but it's a lot of time to do um you know or you have to have the perfect job you know I mean look at Darren gomeni has been over here 20 years and it's really hard it's really hard to do when you're doing something else I mean you're seeing that it's just mm -hmm. a lot of time and a lot of work yeah I would I like a a story you were talking about the other day out on the field when you guys came in your first year 89 and Alan Hancock won the CBC and I think the CBC was only around for a couple of years or five years or before that and uh, at the coaches meeting they said you know what nobody's ever won back-to-back -back league championships. And even though you guys didn't win that year, you guys turned to each other and said, oh, we're going to do that easy. And you rattled off six straight uh, from 90 to 95. And, you know, being young and hungry and, and, and starting a program, I mean, picking up where Coach Bordet left off, but also starting your own program and doing the, the way you wanted to do it, you know, how, how much fun was that? doing it together and having a plan and just keeping it seeing how successful it was to, at, right from the get-go? I'd never been a head coach, so, you know, I just kind of followed what he did. And for me, it was, you know, easy because I'm just following, you know, what he was doing. But I remember that really well. We were at, we were at COS in the room where uh, – in their athletic room when a particular coach said that. And I remember he and I looking at each other and said, you're about ready to <laughs> see that change. But, you know, we are cocky and – thinking we're going to be great for years, which, which we have been. Yeah. Turns, out to be, yeah. turns out to be true. Not too no, cocky. I think we're cocky for sure. Um, have to be. Even my bus driver said that last night. She goes, uh, do, does everybody think you're arrogant and cocky? And I said, well, easy. You may not be driving our bus in the future, win or lose. But um, I don't know. I, you know, it's, it's one thing. I, we've been really successful. We've had a lot of fun. Um, Coach Brankle that's down there at COS, he says, you know, they just they just don't like you down here. They don't like the way you walk. So I go, the way I walk, they go, they just don't like you. Nothing about you. But when you walk to the mound, it irritates them. And so it's it's, I think part of being successful, we've been the, the target's been on our back. I really believe since 1990, and I've enjoyed it. I mean, I love seeing other teams get excited when they beat us because they they really they respect us and they think we're good. Even though our players go, look, what are they doing? I go, they think we're good. You know they're excited. They beat us. Yeah, it's a compliment. And and uh, and when they stop doing that, then you know, then you start to wonder. But um, I think other sc schools have told teams, "Hey, when we beat them, act act like we knew we were going to do it." And but they don't even know how to do that. So um, I'm I'm really excited about this season right now because we have a great group of guys. They play really hard. They practice hard. Um, it's a nice blend. Um, I love with coaching staff. And uh, you know, we're getting ready to start a league next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tuesday. Readley here, right? Six PM. No, it's they don't play night games. Oh, they're not they playing. Play night? three o'clock. Three o'clock. 
And then this weekend you're on the road at Sac City. Um, you know what I was thinking about was I don't remember who we had. It might have been Billy Seamus when we talked about brawls and just, you know, some fights on the field. I'm sure it's different now. It's, it doesn't happen, if at all. But is there any, any instances you remember where there was some pretty good uh, haymakers thrown <laughs> during a game? Go ahead. <laughs> I'll let you finish it. But I remember that partic- one particular fight we had some of our other some of our own guys beating up some of our <laughs> it, it some of the guys up. they didn't like our, but one of our a, pitchers broke his nose and he when he told me who broke it it was one of our own guys but it was a it was a crazy brawl it's bakersfield college at bakersfield college and that's cos but bakersfield college yeah at, at eastern uh, tournament at the visalia oak stadium whatever yeah, that is yeah. so we knew they were squeezing we called a squeeze here comes bakersfield runner so we pitched out. We had him in a rundown and it stopped. And our third baseman, Chris Saunders, who was like Mickey Mantle, he's the best player in the state. He, the guy pushed uh, – Chris tagged him. The guy pushed Chris. Chris pushed him back. And then, man, all hell broke loose. And when I say it broke loose, broke – there was red – they were they have red hats too. When the fight was over, there had to be 20, 30 red hats. Our right fielder, I don't want to say his name, threw a punch. I, I, I still say today it was a 320-foot punch. He ran on a dead run and hit somebody on a run. That guy was laid out. Guys were getting beat up on the mound. We, we did everything we could to stop it. And uh, and then we went around. I was yelling some of the numbers of the Bakersfield guys because they were they were good. I was trying to tell the umpire, look at 18. Look at, that, look at <laughs> that guy. <laughs> He's right. So I'll let Eric finish it. But the funny part was um, they threw out all the players and – we had one, so then they had to sit out a game, I think the rule was. And we were starting conference the next Tuesday, so I called the coach that we were playing on Tuesday and say, hey, is there any way, uh, I can't remember what I said, is there any way we can play a night game? On, can we move it to a night game? He said, oh, sure, because I didn't want to tell him we have to go back to Bakersfield. We actually went back where we had the brawl because we both started the league and we, wanted to, we had to sit out a game, but we each had one game left on our schedule, remember? I forgot so about that. we drove down to Bakersfield – uh, very mild game. We weren't even allowed to talk to each other, the coaches, the p- players, and, and we, we beat them. And then we came home, and then we played the next night in the league, and the coach was mad at me. He goes, that's not right what you did. You know, you you should have told me you were going to Bakersfield because you were being punished and <laughs> moved it back at night. But uh, that was that was a fight. I, I think we've had maybe one or two other ones. That was that was a really good one. We had one with Modesto. Modesto. Yeah, where I remember the, um, I think Shannon or, that that was Brad Shannon, Kim, the catcher. Yeah, Brad got a guy pretty good. And I never coached first. I've only coached first maybe a dozen games, and uh, <laughs> there was a little pop fly towards first after the brawl, right? And uh, the first <laughs> baseman kind of wandered over, and he looked like he tripped over his feet. I thought he was laughing at himself, and then he went into a seizure from the punch just moments before. So then I got on top of him, kind of just like checking him out, and then got steamrolled by Modesto because they thought they I thought was, he was fighting. They thought, thought he was fight, fighting the first. <laughs> they thought he was beating up the first baseman. He was actually on him trying to help him, but they all ran at him, and there was, it was another circus. <laughs> so here we go again. So yeah, those are the one at ba- the one with Bakersfield was was an epic brawl. I mean that was that was like the ones you see on TV. You know today you get. Five game suspensions yeah. for that. If they leave the take, bench, yeah, they've taken everything out of it, which ultimately is good, I guess. Yeah. And, and and for the record, we were one hundred percent innocent in both those brawls. <laughs> yes, and I'm sure you tried to stop them really quickly. We actually did try to stop them, but we were innocent. And anyway. <laughs> your your team never had any dust ups. <laughs> yes, we Chabot. with Chabot, we did. We had benches clear, but nothing, no punches thrown. Was so. it caused by you? Probably because he had no. like seven hits that day. But <laughs> we had a helicopter. Uh, they were worried the stands were yelling at each other. Their catcher flipped off our stands after he scored. He went running to the stands. Remember, flipped off our crowd. Our crowd was going crazy. They had SWAT, like a SWAT group of Fresno police showed up. Yeah, here. well, they overreacted. Reacted. They overreacted a little yeah. bit. I mean, they didn't need a submachine gun, but I thought, you know. <laughs> but, but We had fight in the stands on that fight one. Fight in the stands. Yep. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, Chabot, the Chabot games were great. You know, and he, as a Steve Friend, who's, you know, one of the great coaches, I mean, I answered my phone the other day, you know, over in Salinas, and it was Steve Friend. I almost fell over. Yeah. 
you know, because as an assistant coach, as much as this is fun to get, and I, I know I've been a part of it, and I appreciate Ron telling me that, it's, you know, you're, I'm, and I'm, I know I'm a bigger part than a small part, but it's, but at the end of the day, it's, this is his deal, not mine. And you're an equal part. Let's not downplay it. No. Well, Chad said I'm not giving you any of my soccer wins. I mean, you got four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you all 410 losses that we just talked about. All right. Okay. No, Chad said it on the last episode, you know, because it's true, being an assistant coach, both of us, to be in one spot as an assistant coach as long as you have is you don't see that anywhere. Uh, so it is congrats to both of you and, and for you to put up with it all, you know, all these years too. Well, <laughs> I have to say this cause I'm going to go on record and say it. I think he has the most wins in junior college history because he, he he's going to have like 400 wins when he gets out of soccer. He's won two straight, two stri- state titles. Um, he's become a, probably the top s- soccer program in the state of California. He should go in the Fresno hall of fame for soccer, but he should certainly go for both sports. But he, it, when you say put up with it, it's uh, the way JC baseball is when the season ends, it doesn't matter when it ends, you're, you're already on to the next season. We, hey, we got to call this guy. We got to make sure we get him. He's got two sports he has to do that with. So he's, he's probably tired. I mean, I would be dead tired, dead tired if I was him. And, and so I respect everything he does for us. And I mean, he'll coach soccer from one to three and come over to baseball practice from three to six. And, I mean, the time Eric puts in is incredible. And But, I mean, it, it's hard. It's just it, They just blend after a while, wouldn't you say? I mean, we've been together 34 years, but it, and I remember the very first win, and somewhere in the middle I've lost track of, hey, when did that guy play for you? I go, Man, I don't know. I, I don't know when he played because it's just it's a blend. And, and uh, so it's never like, okay, the season's over. We've got three months to lay around and do nothing. It's just not like that, so – yeah, it's a, it's a, it's different, you know. As I think, as an assistant coach, it was good for me to get a head coaching job. And you know, when I got it, I'm like, what am I, you know, what am I going to do? Because I'd been out of soccer for ten years, and uh, you know, we were, had success early in role. But I, you don't appreciate the head coach probably fully as lessons learned here um, until you are the head coach because it's. I haven't. I don't feel like I've been chasing the record. I knew we were going to hit the record, but I, don't, I never felt. I've never felt any burden or pressure. I did a little bit the other day when you have two buses show up. Yeah, you know, and then we have a bunch of buddies that came over and and uh, from Chowchilla and those guys. You know, I felt some a little bit. Okay, need to, you know, it felt a little bit of pressure to call the right pitches in the right <laughs> moments and stuff, but. I don't know. This pressure is completely different. I, I think I even – maybe I even felt the pressure more. I told this to Ron the other day, and I'm not sure he understands that. I wasn't dis- diminishing it, but I felt the pressure probably even different when I just did baseball, you know, because you go home. But I, I, ha- I really I'm, – I say this in all truth. I sw- I'm doing soccer every single day because I'm the head coach. And, uh, you know, we have Clovis Community College of Soccer in the area. And so, I mean, if you're not on these guys every day and texting and checking with coaches and different stuff, so I can't really turn the soccer switch off. And, and at times I turn the baseball switch off because I know I can show up the next day and kind of turn it back on. And, and But mainly I'm not the head coach. You know, ultimately, you know, it's on, it's on him. It's really – I, f- I mean, I wear the losses and I celebrate the wins, but it's different as an assistant coach. And maybe it wouldn't be if I wasn't doing soccer. And thank, thank God for me that he got me into this job and, you know, I was able to pave my way. Otherwise, when he retired, you know, maybe I would have more interest in being the head baseball coach. You know, I'm not saying I don't have any interest, but I would probably have a lot of interest in it if I hadn't been a head soccer coach. But, um, you know, I've, I've paved my way. You know, I've taken a lot. Of, a lot of my head coaching is is based on how I coach baseball with Ron and watching him. I'm not going to say it bothers me. He coaches soccer. I mean, I wish he didn't because I, when I get the full Eric Soberg, I'm excited. But I, if you look around, there's no phones here because after a while, he started answering the phone for soccer, Fresno City soccer, and I, I go, no, that's too much. It's too much. So I got rid of all the phones. <laughs> I did that early on. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, it was funny. Phone for him, not me. Soccer but. office. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, you know, it's 
it's different doing both. I, you know, now I would never trade what I've done because, you know, we've coached so long together. And if I wouldn't have done the soccer, I would have never really got to experience that part of, uh, you know, trying to build something on my own. And so I'm glad I did that. And I feel like I've helped build the baseball, but it's still, it's, it's not, it's not me, you know. Have you felt, how's the pressure been on you? Have you felt the pressure? I mean, obviously it's, it's gone, Don, you got it, but the last like week and a half, how have, as it well, got closer? I mean, ideally, we knew we were going to break the record. Like, you know, can you imagine people were saying, hey, Ron, you think you're going to get it this year? How many more do you need? I, I go, it's three or four we need. You think you'll get it? And I go, you got to be shitting me. We have 40 games. <laughs> Any more dumb questions? But, uh, you know, I wanted to do it. I knew we were going to do it. I wanted to do it at home. Um, I thought it would have been really cool, but our hitters didn't. So we lost. Uh, <laughs> Three, three games by two runs. Who's the hitting? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, I, I'll tell you what. I was I was interviewed today by Collegiate Baseball. I told the guy it couldn't have been better. We we clinched a tie at home. We celebrated a Gatorade. It was like we won it. Um, we had a party. It was cool. And then it was a great party. You know, with boosters and friends and mostly co- all former coaches. And then we went over there and we celebrated with uh, our team. It was cool. And then. Of course, my wife was there, but but the, we had a Reuter bus, to, which we always joke around. We tell people, hey, we're going to Taft. We have two seats left on our Reuter bus. And sometimes they look at us and go, hey, I'll check my schedule. Let me know. We don't have a Reuter bus ever going to Taft. But but it, it worked out well because we had friends that rented a limo, and um, they were in a real better mood than we were when they got to the three hours away when they got there. But I, I thought it was really special. I thought it was everything the way it happened. Um, but feeling the pressure – I think the best part of my coaching is I still get nervous before every game. You know, it doesn't matter who we play. Um, I knew we were going to beat Hardnell twice. It's crazy. And, uh, but I was still nervous. And, and maybe more nervous for those games than, like, we're playing SAC tomorrow. I won't be nervous. I'll, I'll be excited because I know they're really good. And, and if we beat them, we're going to have a great feeling. And, but uh, you're nervous when you play schools like Hartnell, who I think their coaches think they're going to get beat. And they've, I, in fact, I heard their coach mention it to their players. We're probably going to get beat today, and uh, so I, I, I think I'm more proud that I'm still just as nervous as I was when I first started coaching. So, I, if I didn't have that, I probably I just wouldn't coach. I, I as an assistant watching him, and I, obviously I can f- finish his sentences and he can finish my sentences. I think actually I'm the funnier one of the two, but I think he's stolen a lot of my material. Not a chance, years. no. But see, that's a pull question right there. <laughs> uh, he, he would win it. He's better on the microphone. <laughs> but don't, some of the speech I've helped write, so don't don't let that <laughs> don't let that get away. I'm a I'm a better writer of speeches than deliver. He's a great delivery of speeches. I, I crack when I'm on on, on uh, like an emotional speech. You know, he's delivered some great speeches I've seen. But I, I will say as an assistant, sitting back, not feeling the pressure of what we're trying to do. And I, I don't know if pressure is the right word. I've noticed it on him. That I, 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 I felt like, the pressure? Mm-hmm. I felt like this was... Maybe a little stressed? Yeah, I felt this was weighing on him. Yeah. I, I, I could, could tell that, that this year from last year. Maybe yeah. like to let's, just be done with it? Let's, yeah. Just, yeah. Let's, so we can move on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the pressure... After we broke the record, the pressure the next day was to break it again. So we're going to keep breaking records. Yeah, but that's so, that's a great approach. No, yeah. but no, no. Like Andy Doris, he calls himself the director of baseball. He he texts me last night and goes, "Hey, I just I found out you guys just set a new record today." You know, he's he's our guys love him. He always gives a a speech uh, before we leave on the bus that um, fortunately is not taped. But it's um, he's a he's a funny guy. He's a motivator. But to answer your question, that pressure of of the record. Uh, was probably a, really a lot heavier than I realized it was because it was something. I'll be honest; it was like every day. Well, and they got prolonged. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we, right, right. We would we had an outside shot even two twenty twenty. Yeah, we yeah. had an outside shot at it too. You know, if we would have gotten to the final yeah. four, you know, we had a shot at it. Yeah, but you know, and then last year was just last year was just miserable. I already forgot it. I mean, so. Chad playing for these guys. And, and now coaching, how was it for you? I think, because you know me, I like, I watch and so I feed off of, you know, being around them and stuff. And I could tell Coach Scott was really, it was getting to him a little bit. And so it kind of got to me too. And then the, I've never seen you nervous ever. 
as time as me playing here and coaching here. Um, but you were nervous the Chabot game. I could just tell. Like you just had you didn't have that like uppity about you. you could, like you know joke around and stuff. You were kind of I could just see it because we knew people were going to be there to watch. This was going to tie the record. And um, I even said that to you. I was yeah. like, I've never seen you like this. It just, uh, but being a player and being a part of, I think I was a part of number six hundred. Um, and then being here for the record, it, you, it doesn't. You don't even. I can't even put into words how much it means to me um, to play for such you know great coaches and then be able to be on staff, which was always a dream of mine uh, to coach here. Um, so, I appreciate Chad's, it. Chad's been a great coach. He's been a great addition. It's, it's, he and Michael Tittle have been a real shot in the arm for us, and Johnny Carroll. So they're young, they're young blood, and and I mean Darren Gamani, Bart Selma, Kurt Walker, Eric, and I. Um, Todd Meyer helps us, but it, it's it need we need a shot in the arm, and and those guys they're funny and they're enthusiastic. They they probably are the way we were back back then, and um, so it's a good blend. It's a really good blend. Something we needed, and and uh, so I mean Chad does a great job. He's devoted to the hitters. Gets here early. The kids respond to him well, and and um, he probably wasn't nervous like we were, but we were we were both nervous. I mean, I picked the kid up and threw him in the trash can because he took a call third strike, and I don't normally do that. Um, but um, yeah, I I guess I felt more nervous. I was a little bit more irritable with some kids than I needed to be, and and. Uh, because I just, you know, that Chabot game was crazy. Um, because if we didn't need tie it here, that meant we were going to tie it and break it at, in Hartnell. And uh, I don't know if you've been to Salinas a lot, but if I could pick another place to do it, I would do it. But it's been a, it's we been a played while. we played that night against Chabot against their ace, probably our best five innings of the year. We had clutch hits. Sure. We just played really, really well, and Noah Galvin was on top of his game, and and it was just, a, I mean, it was. A fun game to win because it was a real baseball game. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the team that we need to show up with. Yeah, for the most of the rest of the that year. team will be hard to beat. So we'll see what happens. You know, one thing I was going to say too, because I'm, you know, I'm going to go down the negative train for a moment because that's what I do, right? I'm not. I'm His not, glass is either broken or half empty. So but you, know, I, you know, I hear people sometimes <laughs> say this, and I know we've talked about this because we've we've. I shouldn't say we've we I get, we all, we we have one. I mean, we've won twenty two conference championships, right? One state title, uh, the final four appearances. But some, you know, every now and then you'll hear a, a somebody say, you know, how come they don't win more states and uh, state championships? And I'm going to tell you this because I I deal with this in soccer. I've been really fortunate to win two. You know, we've in soccer we've been to a ton of state championships and won two. And the reason why the answer to that question is for the people that are asked, wondering that. Is because uh, we're Fresno, right? So Fresno is a great baseball city. It's a great soccer city. It's great at sports, right? But there are bigger metropolitan areas, and that's what community college is about. Now we we could have won two or three state titles here. Um, Chad was on a great team. There was you know maybe another team, but the but the real reason is you're playing against Orange County, you know, that out just they're just bigger just bigger schools and so some people go you know I, that, that team i love this comment i love this comment that i hear sometimes in the public by maybe a naysayer that team how did they not win it you know why they didn't win it because <laughs> the team we lost to is they were better. better and we're in fresno we are so fortunate with our athletics but we are in fresno right and i don't mean to diminish this I'm, i've lived here all my life this is this is my town I've never moved on. I love Fresno. But when you're playing somebody from Orange Empire or Sacramento City or th those schools are big and they're they're big or better. Like Mount Sac. <coughs> nobody knows this. Sixty seven thousand people enrolled in Sac Mount Sac. It's one of the largest schools in the United States counting all levels. And so when you go to play those teams or they come to you to play in the state final four, I mean we looked over and I was the pessimist, but we looked over in that Riverside dugout a couple times and went, "We're in, tr you know, we we're in trouble. We're in trouble." We didn't tell the players that, but you know, and then we've, and, and then you, what happens in those games too? And I know I'm being long-winded on this, but I, this I is kind of passionate about me. You lose a game, right, or you win a game. You get deeper into that tournament, into the third and fourth game. To be honest with you, you just don't match up with them. 
you've you've got to win that thing in three well, games. Well, I'm going to interject because the playoff format's different than in the old days. So the old days there was two out of three. So in in probably the past 20 years, maybe more, you're playing in a four team tournament the first week, and even though you're playing, let's say you're the number one seed, you you got the one, seven, eight, and sixteen. So they're still good. Those are good baseball teams. In baseball, anything can happen. Anybody can beat anybody. So if you're fortunate enough to win the first four-team regional, now you're into another four-team regional with four of the best teams in Northern California. And then if you win that, which is a hell of an accomplishment, we've dogpiled unbelievable after winning that game just to get to the Final Four. And now you're in the Final Four with another great team from Northern California and the two best from Southern California. And those are tougher than tougher than hell to win and and so when they say ron you only won one state title it said yeah 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 we only won one i start to tell them but but you know what they don't care they, or they don't understand they don't understand i say we've had i think we've had two teams that i really thought could win it underwood and you and then we had one with jason wood back uh early i think our second year we we had yeah. a, just had a great so team 90 i think 90. 01 too 01 mm -hmm. with uh Asahina, that yep. was a good yeah, shot yeah we too. we've had like Probably three or four teams that we we thought we could give it a shot, but um, the other teams were great. You know, we've had a couple of bad breaks. I remember Ryan Rothford hit a line drive with the bases loaded, two outs that the center fielder from Riverside made a head first long dive and snow coned it, and probably the only center fielder that we really have played against that would have caught that ball. Three runs would have scored, we would have won the game. But the guy made a great play, and and uh, as part of baseball, and. Uh, I don't. I don't have any regrets. I mean, of course, I wish we would have won more state titles, but we didn't. And uh, but we've done really, really well. Um, my success as a coach, or our success, would be measured by. I was counting them up. Over 200 text messages from former players, phone calls, emails, just saying, "Hey, happy for you guys. Knew it was going to happen. Best experience of my life, athletically." And so, to me, that's what winning is all about. And it, and it's not just winning on the field, but it's winning like that off the field and, and <clears throat> I get emotional because I mean I got a I got an email from a kid that didn't start for me at Madera named John Ariano and he goes man I'm so happy for your coach I have three boys and I teach them the things that you taught me and this is a guy that didn't even start in high school and uh and I was just like taken back by it but so we've reached a lot of kids that have had a lot of fun and, and a lot of success like Eric said the other night that a, a lot of, of a whole bunch of kids have gone on to unbelievable four-year schools and I don't know we have seven or eight big leaguers but all Americans but it's it's all the guys that came here and they're lawyers they're doctors they're teachers they're coaches it, it's Dennis, just fun. everything yeah even the, the coaching tree well we have a coaching tree how it many was, city guys are coaching now there's a lot of them recently there was a lot you know uh but you know it just it changes there's a little bit in one in every program in town so yeah, it's, I just wanted to point it out because it's just it's one of those things that grates on me. And then you know, there's they're, they're just they're, there's not many people that say it. It's like that team should have won it. You have no idea. You don't even know what the no. other teams are. And uh, it's uh, it's just something I wanted to bring up. No, it's it's hard to do. Yeah, I mean, it's really just like winning a World Series. It's, you know, it's hard to win a World Series. And the state championships used to be two out of three. And we're always equipped for a two used, out of three. In the, in the very old days, they were ranked. So they, this team's ranked one in the north. This team's ranked one in the south once you guys play for the state title. So, I mean, things are different. And that's not to diminish those teams. Those championships, because no. that's the way it was. It's just the way it was. But it is, it's a gauntlet. And, uh, like, for our team to win the state championship, we'd have to play perfect baseball down the stretch this year, which yeah. we can do, and that's what we're trying going to try and do. But there's... There's at least a dozen teams out there right now that are really, really good. One of them we're going to see tomorrow night about 6 o'clock. They're and, going to be really good. And when you have those big metropolitan areas, they uh, have a lot of kickbacks from the Division I. Right. And, and that is definitely one of the keys to, uh, you know, getting it done. But because they just – I mean, look at one, our, our ace this year's kickback from kickback Fresno from State. Kickback from Fresno State. So – well, and you talked about sixty thousand kids in a school. It's not even. It's more than double what you have here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you pull in the Mount Sac. I'm not kidding you. It's it's like pulling in the USC. And um, you know, unfortunately, they're the they're the kind of the king of the mountain in soccer. You know, Chad's 
<clears throat> Excuse he, me. Is that was that a soccer comment? Yeah. I heard. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> We're in a soccer T-shirt. Okay, and I saw the soccer T-shirt. <laughs> Could you just you can black it out or whatever? What do you what do you call that? Crop it. Crop, crop it. it. Crop it out, please. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen a lot of balls leave this yard here, and Chad. Andy tells a story about one you hit. Was that in BP or a game that went on to the? Yeah, I was, think you told it too. It against, goes to the bottom of the ninth against. Uh, it was yeah. either Sac or Palomar. Put him out. Consumers River. It was I no, no, that was the walk off opening, yeah. opening game of the year. That's the one I said, Ron. I think Chad should be in. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he tells one about Leonard Davis who hit one. Oh man, that was against yeah. uh, Sac City at night. Disappeared. Is there any in particular that stand out to either of you about some balls that have left this yard during a game? Chad told me one about Dylan Lewis the other night. Oh yeah, the one. Chad's run. Chad stood out because Chad stands out to me as one of the, you know top ten because of the moment, and then his dad was not holding it together. I think as he hit it, you know, and he came. He was a pinch hit, you know. He was he didn't wasn't starting, and uh, and, and I the have guy, a lot. Of, the guy throwing was really good. We too. have a, like I had five coaches, and I got voted. I voted five one. I wanted to start Chad that night, but the other guy said no. <laughs> No, no, but that guy was throwing hard. It was under the lights. It was really, really cold in February. I mean, really cold. And uh, the kid came in there and goes, oh, shit, he's throwing 92, 93. And his first pitches were 92, 93. And he said, Chad, you should be fine. You've been sitting over there in the cold for two and a half hours. He got up and hit a rocket out of here to win the game for us. And his dad is, is more of a baby than I am. He cried. We won a championship one night, and his dad was in the background crying. I go, Jim, what are you, what are you crying about? And he goes, I've never won one before. <laughs> <laughs> I've never won a championship. And there, I mean, and that's when you stop and you realize, man, championships are really special. And we have a lot of balls on the fence here of championships. And our kids that walk in the gate, they don't, they, they, they don't even look at those. And, and I think they expect to put one on there. But you have to. It takes a lot of work to win those championships, and they're they're harder as you as you. It's more successful you are. But every once in a while I see a, an older man with his grandchildren standing in front of a 19, you know, 73 ball or whatever, and he's telling the kids that he played on that team, and, and it's and it's really cool. But Jim Rothford was one of the most successful baseball players in this area and played at a lot of good places. But that, that he said that was the first championship that he had been on, and, and I just it took me back a little bit that, how much we should appreciate winning championships because they're hard to win. 100%. That's I'm, a Mike Noakes thing. Mike Noakes says, never underestimate a championship. You know, the biggest home run I remember for me personally was the Matt Rico. Rico. Yeah. Mm. That, that was in, that this was the Cuesta. Cuesta? Yeah. Yeah. Eight, final, seven, final four. Seven final. <laughs> you know. Final four. Was that the game we, we brought him back? Uh, where Alexander said, "Yeah, Alexander brought the infield in. We're down. So we we're down seven, seven zero. zero. Our pe people had not settled in the stands yet. And we were playing Cuesta. We're down seven zero, and they had runner on third, and the infield was coming up. I mean, at it's that actually, point, I think it was bases loaded. Well, he, I know he wanted to. Yeah, it might I have said, started. once you guys play back, second and third, maybe one out. I go play back, give him the run, eight zero. What the hell at this point?" <laughs> And Dave Alexander walked over. He's one of my favorite coaches ever. Walked over and said, Coach, uh, I don't mean to interject here, but I think you ought to bring him up. When you when you bring him up, you're telling the guys you still think we have a shot here. I said, all right, you're, you're Which right. Which we didn't. Which we didn't. So we, <laughs> we brought him up, and we got out of the inning. They might have even hit a ground ball to the infielder that was up. We got out of the inning, and we, we rallied back. It was 7-5, and there was two outs in the bottom of the ninth. It was a final four, so – when we play in the Final Four, there's a couple thousand here, which is hard to imagine. But their people were lined up down both sides. Sac City was in the first base bleachers because they were playing the next game. And Cuesta had their all-state closer pitching. And Rico was up with two on, two out. We're down by two. I get goosebumps. I, I haven't got Me too because I was there. I yeah. can't. I, I, it's hard to talk. Playing. So, yeah, Ryan was playing. So Rico's a guy that didn't like the slider. He's a lot like me. So that's why I became a coach. I not only didn't like it, I couldn't hit it. But And the guy kept throwing sliders to Rico, and he kept either, I can't remember, fouling him off or just looking at him, and, and it, which is amazing because he swung at him all year. And finally, they, he threw him another one, and he hit it. Up, I mean, he hit it a mile down the left field line. And I remember standing out in front of the dugout, hoping, hoping, I'll get emotional, hoping it was fair. I turned around and looked at the umpire, and Rico had not left the batter's <laughs> box. He was standing there. at home plate like, oh, arms right. up. And it was a great run around the bleachers. The place was going crazy. And then those It was like kids, two feet fair, too. Yeah. yeah. No and one moved, really. No one moved. And the, and we looked out there at the shortstop from Cuesta was from Clovis. He Nick Ponmarenko. He had made a tragic – we don't mention names like that. We <laughs> Sorry. Mentioned, mentioned, he made a tragic mistake by going over there and not being able to go to – the 
But anyway, they were just laying on the ground. They couldn't believe it. And uh, I was teaching a class over at Cal Poly during the summer right after that. And Larry Lee was the Cuesta coach. And he was in the back row. You know, people take those, pay a, you know, pay a, pay a fee, get a B, whatever it is. They take those classes to get units. So I was teaching about baseball practices and things. And I go, anybody have any questions? And he raised his hand. And he goes, you think I went one too many sliders on Rico on that pitch? <laughs> anyway, he, so he, he'll never forget that. And, I mean, he's a successful coach now, but he'll never forget that loss, just like we'll never forget that win. I was standing by the drinking crazy. fountain. I mean, I remember where I was standing when he hit that. And I just kind of looked that way, and it, it was unbelievable. It was wow. unbelievable. McGill had hit two home runs in that game prior to that, a shortstop who hadn't hit one. He hadn't, hit, a, he hadn't hit one in batting practice in two years here. And he hit two. Hit two that game. Clint McGill went to Clint Texas McGill. Tech. That's the, Texas Tech. That's the final four we could have won. Because that was the night before yeah. when the center fielder picked the ball off yeah. the ground. Yep. Yeah. In, uh, against Riverside. And Riverside went back to back to back, but we, we were really good. And we lost four to three in the opening game of that final four to, uh, we, we lost to Riverside, but we re really lost to Delvin Young. Delvin oh, Young. yeah. yeah. Big leaguer. Two, two run home runs. Talk about a home run of an opposing player. They hit it by the scoreboard. The yeah. old scoreboard, which was bigger, and it was still going up yeah, when it, it hit going it. Up. I, you know, I didn't call pitches. Uh, that year, no, Ryan that. did. Yeah, because Ryan was Ryan good did. at. You know, you know. Hopefully, uh, Ryan's not watching this. He hit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he hit. He hit two changeups for home runs. Both both home runs were off of changeups. Probably didn't get the location then. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't like single handedly blame your family for that. But no, no, <laughs> no, no. We we they were that. That was probably the right pitch. I would have thrown changeups to that guy too. But he was big. He's a big league hitter. He was a big time player. I'll say this about Chad too: if there was a class that needed to be taught about the history of the baseball program, he would be. He would. I mean, the stuff he tells me and what he remembers is insane. Like, and that's more like you talked about your players just walking by the. This, like this guy, I still walk by and look at balls, and I'm like, "Yep, I remember I that guess guy." He just knows where, what this place has been like to keep it relevant for 30 years is insane it's hard to do winning is hard getting to a final four yeah. is hard oh it's hard really yeah, hard it's really hard so i remember alfano had a huge home run on the coast i remember he uh touched second base he walk off against Cypress. sobbing he was sobbing as he came around second base you know and he he was uh you know elk equivalent of a second or third round pick yeah i think he, he hit it off that Pedrosian or it whatever. It was X, guy threw Elks Field. Uh, I think the fence is like six feet high. We were down by three, if you can imagine. This space is loaded. And he hit a line shot six feet, two inches. <laughs> I thought it was going to go through the fence, but it just went, kept going like a jet, went over the fence. And, and side, I remember their coach had to catch a Pick. plane. He had to, to catch Tennessee. a plane. So he was, I think Alfano was rounding third, and he was running by us with his briefcase saying, great win. Alfano was sobbing. We had a couple at Clovis that one time in the playoffs, too. Shola hit one there. Shola hit one. Jason DeCanio hit DeCanio one. DeCanio hit a bomb there, yeah. Against Sac City, it was really nice beating them. Them and their 74 players and 10 uh, laptop computers. We used to pl have to play the off game at Clovis High School. You know, but it was before fun. They, before they were letting us play at night. There's been some bombs here, some great, some great games. The other one I had for you is as – because I only have stories. I've only heard from, like, Woody and some other guys. I think you've mentioned some stuff with, like, Raleigh. and who The mound visits. I know you both made some legendary mound visits. Uh, have you ever had to, like, get out of player for, to get him out of the game? Like, have you ever had any pushback, like, legit pushback that you remember? Like, this guy doesn't want to come out? He pulls the guys. <laughs> He'll ask me sometimes. You know, well, usually he asks me, and I say, you know, I think it's time or – and every now and then, the guy will talk him into it, staying when he gets out there. But so, yeah, we're, we probably have different focus on our mound visits. I'll be honest. Yeah, he does. I, I see them. I see them laughing. But you know, so I, which is good because it needs it. So I caught at the University of Miami and called every pitch. And then my senior year, Ron Frazier would let me make the pitching choice changes. So he would start. He'd put a cigarette out. We called him Puff. He'd, he'd just put a cigarette out and he'd start walking in the mound. And the pitcher would go, going, "Please, please." Oh, come on, I want to keep pitching, you know, and, and I'd say, nah, you just don't have it, man. You don't, you're, you don't have the bite on your slider. 
And uh, I know we lost my last game I played at Miami. We lost. We went one too many sliders with this guy, Stan Jakubowski, that was All-American, 16-3, and three, had a great slider. And Frazier came to the mound and goes, Ron, what do you think? And I go, Stanley Tired's better than anyone we're coming in, Coach. He's our best pitcher. And we called a slider to a guy that couldn't hit it, kind of like that Pierce the other night. And he ass out, flipped one over second, and, and left us on the field. So um, call, taking a guy out of the game, is, to me, is one of the hardest choices, um, especially when it's your ace. And he's kind of he's tired a little bit. And we, we one thing about Eric, he takes good care of our pitcher's arms. Um, when pitchers go, what's my pitch count today? Am I on a pitch count today? I want to strangle them because the last thing we're ever going to do is hurt somebody's arm. We'll take them out, uh, even though we get pushback from some coaches. Noakes, why is he coming out? And I go, well, he's throwing 110 pitches. When do we matter? <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me laugh. But uh, taking out a guy that's throwing 100 pitches or 105 pitches, um, knowing that the guy coming in is probably not as good as he is, even when this guy's tired, those are tough choices to make sometimes, and, and sometimes you make the wrong choice. Those I, are my wrong choices. Yeah, so, I don't, yeah. They, they definitely like me coming out more than yeah. Ron because they know they're not getting pulled. <laughs> you know, so I think I pulled a guy in the playoffs one time, and Ron, uh, I won't go into this story, by the way. Ron goes, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, well, it was a good decision. Just leave it at that for the, for the podcast today. <laughs> so, but it was time to get him out of the game. It was a big game, too. Yeah, it was big. Yeah, it was against Chabot. I went out one time. Um, it's the helicopter game we're talking about with the SWAT. Yeah. Remember the game? So My year? When I was here? Yeah, I, pulled, I went out yeah, we talked to a guy, somebody. and I had to pull a guy out. We'll, I, get, we'll get it after we're done. I don't yeah, even yeah. remember. <laughs> when we're done. So yeah. I want to tell this story in the state championship game. I don't mind telling this. So Tony Chavera started. He only had started one other game in two years here. And Tony's 5'8", maybe, if he's standing on a bench or something. <laughs> But he threw slider after slider after slider after slider. I mean, his his arm had to be like that when he left. And he was done. He was done. And we were winning. I think we'd score was 2-2. Two two. Eric goes, I think he's done. And I went out to the mound to tell him he's coming out. He didn't want to come out. And I looked down in the bullpen. We had a lefty and a righty throwing. I don't want to say their names. One guy threw it over the backstop. <laughs> and the other guy threw a two-hopper off the catcher. And I patted Tony on the butt, and I said, this is your ball game. And I walked back in, and I, I think you said something like you said something to me. I go, we got to stay with them. Those guys come in. <laughs> yeah. We would. And Tony, he just was unbelievable. And you know, and and it's funny. We still are in contact once or twice a year with Tony. He always, because we had we used to have a say. We have a lot of sayings that probably aren't good on here, but one of them was we you know have we scored yet? We say that before the game started. And Tony will leave a message on our machine. We'll know it's him. Hey, have we scored yet or something like that? But. Um, he came in, got him out of the ninth, and then we scored in the bottom of the ninth and won the state. So we had three complete game wins there. Yeah, and if, if you think to about be honest it, with you, if we would have lost that game, we were in trouble the next one. No. I'd already promised six pitchers that are starting the next game. <laughs> <laughs> so, and their parents. And we had good pitching, too. But they, I remember, I remember we called uh, somebody. You know, this before scouting was as advanced as it was. And we, we asked, uh, I was talking to a friend about the, this the other day too but we called some of these said hey is this guy named brewer throne no yeah good luck <laughs> and he was in the big leagues three Could you years imagine later. they didn't start that guy and we were yeah, facing him in. and we're throwing uh infield pitcher from mclean high school there's a perfect <laughs> example of, of fresno so he didn't he just kind of relayed for us he didn't he never started and but we didn't think sack could hit slider so we started tony and and he went the full nine. Last game I think he ever pitched. But he, um, they started this Brewer, big, tough lefty. And we scored two in the first inning. And then we never had a base runner till the ninth. And when I say we never had a base runner, we never had a base runner. And the innings were quick. And this team could just mash. Yeah, we, we couldn't could get anybody on base. And then the ninth inning we scored. Uh, it was crazy. We, did, they, did they bring a reliever in? Yeah. They Brewer's, shouldn't have brought a reliever in. Brewer might have started the inning off, but they brought a right-handed reliever in. Who was good? Yeah. 88, 91, slider. But we uh, – that Brewer was literally in the big leagues like two years later with the Phillies. I mean, it, it, it you know, that was different eras of J.C. baseball. So we won that one. I'll, I'll just real a quick one. So we had second and third, two outs, bottom of the ninth, and we had an on-deck hitter. We thought they were going to walk Kevin Howard because Kevin Howard honestly was like 11 for – 
15 in, in the regional and in the state championships. He was so hot, had all these RBIs. And the guy behind him had not had a hit yet and had struck out seven times. And uh, we Madera thought, boy. Huh? Madera, Madera boy. guy. And I do not want to mention his name because he, he would drive down here and kick my ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm being serious when he would. So anyway, he uh, we told him, uh, hey, they're going to walk him. You know, you're you're the, you're going to win the game for us. You could walk. You, you might want to take a pitch because I'm not taking any pitches like that. And I go, oh my god. And I looked up and they're pitching to Kevin, and he hits a bouncer over the mat. We had Chris Saunders at second and Scott Taglioni at third. And I'll, I got goosebumps again. So Kevin Howard hit a bouncer over the mound, and it kept bouncing. It's one of those things you're watching, hoping it goes through. And as it got to second, Chris Saunders was standing there double fisting. He hadn't, he hadn't hit him run yet. Tagley only ran about 70 feet, remember? Yep. He ran about 70 feet, and he stopped and started doing this to the crowd. And I remember screaming at the top of my lugs, tag, <laughs> tag that effing plate. And you had told Kevin, if you get the hit, yeah. make sure you run the first. Because, you know, some guys celebrate. They don't run the first, and they get thrown out from center field. That's the sequence on our wall. Yeah, the sequence is right up there. Yeah. So, anyway, that's a great memory. That was pretty good. The, yeah. problem, the problem with that is um, I, I know I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I, I, I ran – I think I ran a good pitching staff, but I, I didn't really know what I was doing. And we were young and – Figured we didn't understand the dynamics of what I was talking about earlier that we're in Fresno and we're Sacramento and LA and all these other schools. So I, th I didn't appreciate that near as much as the ones I appreciated in soccer because of the longevity. And, you know, I think well, that soccer without again, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think we just thought we were going to rattle some off. Yeah, we did actually. Well, I know we did, yeah. you know, and, and when you look at that team on 92, it was a perfect storm of players. I'm, you know, we just, we were, I want to say, I think we did a good job coaching them, but I mean, we had a perfect storm of players that came in, you know, uh, division one kickbacks and, mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, we don't, if Saunders doesn't come back, we don't we certainly. Billy Seamus. Yeah. yeah. I say Billy was talked about that team. Mm -hmm. There's a rule in the three C two A book. Off of that that team, the Chris Saunders rule. Chris Saunders rule. Yeah, he had had a bad back. He played at Cal Berkeley the year before, and he had back issues and things didn't work out. So he he had a doctor's note from a chiropractor about that his never back. Would, never would work now. And now there's a rule in the three C two A. It says no chiropractors. Literally says you can't have a chiropractor. That's a Chris Remember, Saunders. So wow. we we were trying to get that. him eligible and. Nobody would approve it. He had played right on the borderline of uh, the medical red shirt. He had played at Cal, but he played like six games, and you can play six or whatever. So he was playing all fall for us. He was great. I mean, he was great. And then we're getting ready to play our very first game of the year. A lot of scouts were here. Um, and he wasn't cleared yet. And Eric goes, what are you going to do? He was cleared and then what, then got uncleared. Uncleared. He goes, what are you going to do? I said, we're going to play him. Um, which you could never do now, but I was naive and I didn't care. But then back then, but I told him not to play him. And I remember Dave, <laughs> Dave Meyer. We both told him not to play him. He said, "If you don't play him, then it looks like he he's he shouldn't not, be playing him." Everybody will wonder why he's not playing. They'll start talking, but we'll play right. him. And they would have all started talking. And what? How come Saunders not playing? And we'd say, "Well, he's trying to get cleared." And then people would start looking into it more. So. I just went ahead and played him, and then he was cleared like the following Tuesday, and no one said anything. But you went 15 for 10 that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> he was unbelievable. Yeah, that's putting in some work. Yeah, he was he was a special player, and you know we were 45 and seven. He he missed four games that year. We lost all four because we just lost our mojo around him. But he was he was the straw. Yeah, he was it. But we had great we had great players everywhere, we really did. We were just and we had, you know, a forty man roster. Number one pitchers are forty man roster guy. And number two was Seamus. Mm -hmm. When you have Billy Seamus as your number two, number one was Joey Jacobson. Thirteen and one that year. Yeah, and when your number two is Seamus, you you probably got a pretty good team. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, you think about baseball just in that time, even at Fresno State, like to have two programs. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Well, yeah, they wrote an article. Um, Bill McEwen, I won't get into all the specifics of it, but Bill McEwen wrote an article, uh, you know, when we came back from Riverside, 
you know, who would win the series between Fresno State and Fresno City. And I remember thinking that, you know, and I was pretty fresh out of Fresno State. I mean, we, those two guys would have given Fresno State a game. I, and I'm not saying we're comparative. You know, Fresno State's Division One; they're different. And, and then the, and I think the gap has grown over years because of JC baseball is a little bit different. But I but mean, that that's we would that team would have hung in with some Division One certainly when those two guys were throwing. And we we had beaten State during the winter on Monday nights until they got they weren't playing their best players when we were beating them and our guys were acting like it's the World Series and and then Coach Bennett played his best guys best pitcher one night and we got beat but. Coach Ben and I at the end got along great, but and we got along really great up until that happened. And because McEwen started that article, yeah, and he goes, "Ron, seven game series. What do you think?" And I said, "I think we might get one. You know, I mean, they'd win the series, of course." Was my exact quote. But maybe we get one game. There's nothing wrong with saying that state champion in junior college gets one game. But our pitchers were all our kids were all the same age as their kids because we had a bunch of three year guys. And so McEwen called Coach Bennett and he goes, "Hey, what do you think? Seven game series?" He goes. Apples and oranges, you can't even compare the two of us. Wouldn't even be close. And then but Bill McEwen told Bob, "Well, Ron thinks he'd Ron thinks he'd win, <laughs> not one game, the series. Ron thinks he'd win." <laughs> and then that started. Uh, it put a real strain on our relationship, which we worked out later, but not for a while. I mean, he was mad, and I don't blame him. I mean, McEwen stoked uh, stoked the fire there, and then threw a big log on it, and he didn't have to. Yeah. Put some gasoline in there. Yes, gas. Well, those those <laughs> gas trucks. Those columns in the Fresno Bee in the day. That's what they did. Well, that's you where know. you got. That's where you got everything from. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it wasn't my, whatever they're writing. It was you know, and I don't blame it because you look back. That's what they were trying. You know, that's what they were trying to do. They're trying to create readership, I guess. And we're Ron and I are getting old. You guys don't look it. I'll tell you that. Not even. I'm on the back nine. I I want to say I'm up on. <laughs> I'm down, walking down the 15th fairway. I couldn't even tell you. So, the best way to look at it is look at he, your calves. When he, when he was playing little league, <laughs> oh, shit, I, I wasn't there. born. I mean, that, that's the best way to look at it. <laughs> nah, now, we're ten years apart, but he's he looks better than I do. But it's you know we're both getting there. We are. I'm certainly on the back nine. He's maybe a hole ahead of me. Hole. As we as we know, <laughs> you're man, hitting you into me. Yeah. <laughs> as we know, you can be on the back nine at any moment. Yeah. You know? We've seen a lot of that here. Yeah. No, and unfortunately. It's, that's tough. Yeah. I mean, you know, to have Sammy's number out there yep. and the guy that wasn't you know, I'm sure he was definitely a part of it and I know he was with you guys, that's for sure. So um, a lot of those kids on the field that were coaching Sammy recruited. And Sammy <coughs> I, I just can't get into what a special person he was. What a special family guy. You know, just the whole bit's awful. And J J died recently yep. in a car accident. It just uh I guess when you coach long enough, you have some tragedies that you'll just never uh, get over. I'll, I, I personally will never get over Sammy. So oh, he fit in so well, fit in with our humor. He too. was so funny. He was the worst man. He would just <laughs> pile on. You, just let me have my one joke. Don't come back and put stuff in my locker uh, and sh- yeah. shoes and stuff. He was, he was really. He'd take it to the next level, which I generally don't like to be beaten on but he <laughs> he was bad but he yeah he's bad sorely missed okay i need to go because we're yeah, doing pickoffs it's kind of time to go to practice yeah. uh, i appreciate you guys doing this it is a big deal and congratulations to you both appreciate and, it uh he's the guy this weekend they're at sac city next week uh at home against Reedley tuesday at three so come check out the rams guys that's uh it's the internet podcast thank, thank you guys very much for thanks guys us. got it coach thanks.